Hello students, we're back. Um, this last weekend I uh, had a chance to go to a movie theater. Uh, we rented it out for uh, uh, what they call a private party. It was actually my birthday, so um, I chose to see an older movie, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was uh, old, the first Indiana Jones movie uh, from, I think it was 1981 was, was when that was released. And I remember being a kid and watching that and really enjoying the film, but I hadn't really watched it um, uh, since then. And I just was having so much fun listening to the musical score of that. Um, and especially the trumpet parts are just so great and, uh, and the writing. And it reminded me uh, years ago, uh, maybe three or four years ago, I got to play what they call the orchestral suite. That's just a series of pieces from... Um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And so we got to play the, the melodies and the themes and stuff. And then I remembered that there's, a, I thought there was a video of that from that concert. We did a whole series of, uh, of movie scores. It was called Hollywood Hits or something was the concert. And uh, even though I couldn't find the Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, video, I did come across, as I was looking for it, I came across the recording, a video of the Star Wars theme and the main title, the Star Wars main title, they call it. And it's, we got to play the original um, uh, piece with a full orchestra like it was intended to be. It was a lot of fun. And I, this inspired me to do a lesson today on fanfares and how we sort of interpret those and who doesn't like Star Wars. In fact, just for the occasion, I wore, my, uh, I wore one of my many, many Star Wars shirts. That's a picture of an, or a diagram, I guess, of an ad at <laughs> armored transport, something or other. Uh, so we're going to get started on the Star Wars, but we're going to be looking at it through this lens of how we play fanfares and what a fanfare is and why it's important for us. All right, to start, we're going to um, we'll just get the notes and the rhythm part out of the way. I think most of us probably know how this, uh, this tune goes. Uh, so I'm going to put up here a transcription of the melody of the Star Wars main title. Um, and really the only tricky bit here um, are these triplets, right? So we've got some triplets in measure one, or the pickups, I should say. We have triplets in every measure. So the way we deal with triplets, that just means there's three notes, three even notes in a beat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, like that. And we count those one triplet one, one triplet one, like that. So at the beginning we have one triplet one, two, one, two, one triplet one, two, one, one triplet one, two, one, like that. So that's just the basics of that. And just looking at the very first note, uh, we have low G, and if you're not familiar with low G, that's just fingered one and three. Kind of like a D, but it's much lower. It's way down there, okay? And it's hard to get the nice triplet tonguing down low like that. Um, so I'm going to just play the first four measures here for you. And it turns out this four measures just repeats. Uh, you play that twice, and then the strings take over into... A middle section but this is the, the main theme so one triplet one I'll do it slow one two here we go all right and then that just repeats over and over again again the triplets might be a little bit tricky for you uh, but hopefully you know how the tune goes. That makes it a lot easier. Um, and then the other kind of technical challenge, well, there's several <laughs> we'll get to in a minute. But the, uh, me the second measure there, we have that triplet down to D, and then we have to leap up to the high C. Probably a good idea to practice that. It's kind of like our octaves, if you want to review our octave lesson from the other week. So let's try that low D to a high C. <laughs> Practice it with the triplet. Maybe 
try that a few times uh, while you pause the video just to make sure that that's coming out. We have to do that twice in the second measure uh, and in the third measure. So we'll talk about this in a little more depth uh, in our next segment. Okay, so once we have just the basic tune down, uh, it's time to talk a little bit more about interpretation. Um, this would be characterized as something like uh, called a fanfare. And fanfares for trumpet players like you and I, these are our bread and butter. This is what we get paid to do well, especially. Uh, so it's important that we give it a little bit of thought because you can play this with the notes and the rhythm just fine. And maybe I'll try this. Let's see if you can see if it sounds like exciting to you. Does it does it make you anticipate in anticipation that you're going to see a cool movie or anything? I'm gonna I'm gonna just do something different with it and see what you think. What do you think? It sounded fine. It even sounded maybe pretty a little bit, but it's not really supposed to sound pretty, is it? So what do we have to do to give it uh, give it that excitement? Well, we it's about all about our technique and our timing. Uh, we're going to play this in a style called marcato. All the notes will be a little bit separated. We're not to, we're not we're not making it legato. We're not going to slur anything. Certainly, everything just has a really powerful ta 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 ta. But we're not going to mess around with our tonguey. We want that really ta ta ta, real strong T. We don't want a la or a da or a na or a slur, anything like that. Everything's gonna have a strong tongue. And I can tell you right off the bat, those first three notes, really hard to tongue clean and fast and powerful like that on a low, low G. So I'd recommend trying that kind of slow. Sorry, notice I'm putting a little space between those Gs. And then from that C to the G, again, I'm going to punch the note, but I'm also going to leave this much space between the notes. To, 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 to. There's just this much space between those notes. Did you hear that? There's just a little bit of space. And that's kind of what we're looking for on everything here. A little bit of extra space between the notes. It helps us get a strong uh, articulation on every note. Um, let's look at measure two, which is the same as measure three. We practiced hopefully that low D to high C, that it's almost an octave jump. That's hard to play well. Ta 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 T, ta 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 T, really strong tongue, yeah? And then we'll add the G in. Ta 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 T, ta. As you hear, there's a little bit of space between the D and the G again. This is that marcato. Ta 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 ti ta. Just that hair of space left in there. So I'll um, try this again and go through it with a marcato sound. I'm not going to play it too fast. Hopefully, you can try to, to practice along with me. So one, two, three. See, that G, I goofed it up. That's tough to play. Good idea to be really ready for that one. One, two, three. Good, and if, uh, if you've watched the video on the third valve slide, we have uh, D at the very end. Good idea to pull out the slide for that. All right, uh, in the next few segments, we'll be talking about some more, well, the next segment, we'll talk about more advanced stuff about this. Uh, and then, but hang on till the very end because there's a little, uh, little mini bonus here at the very end, okay? So in the description below, I included a, a link to the, the concert that I played where I got to play this piece. Um, and what I just played for you, or uh, what we're working on right now, this low G part, uh, G, 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 C. It turns out, I, well, I was playing the third trumpet. There are three trumpets in the in the score, uh, at least in the version we played. And the third trumpet actually ends up playing this melody in that key 
many times, and it's the lead voice. It's uh, pretty much mostly the brass playing it. You mostly hear the horns because there's four horns blasting away, and the trombones, I think, are playing that as well. But the trumpet is a bit of a lead voice on that, and the third trumpet is actually the one that gets to do it. The first and second trumpet player get to rest during that time. Uh, but um, in the opening, if you're a more advanced player, we don't play it down this octave. We play it up an octave. So this, uh, if you're a more advanced player, I'm going to have you try this thing way up high. It's exactly as written, but an octave higher. Right, that's no joke to play that up high and, and clean like that. And not only that, all three trumpet players are playing that in unison. We're all playing this exact same line. Uh, in unison. Um, so if you're an advanced player, I'm going to have you do that. Also, uh, later in the piece, it's played in different keys, or at least in one different key that I can remember. Uh, and so I'm going to ask you, if you're more advanced, to try playing this in some other keys. A good way to think of this is by numbers, right? Five, 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 one, five, four, three, two, right? It's a little bit of, of extra thinking to do there, but um, I believe it's played in the key of A for us. So we'd start on E. All right, see if you can figure that out in the key of A. Uh, the next segment, I have one little tiny bonus for you, something that I discovered playing this piece for myself. All right, a little, little bonus micro lesson here, or, just something that I thought was neat about this piece. Uh, towards the very end, uh, there's a little melody. The da 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 uh, and there's this neat little line. Uh, I'm going to bring it up on screen for you now. It's super simple, but it's very effective. And see if you can pick it out uh, if you listen to the, the full main score. So I'll just play it for you. Again, we're playing this marcato, a little bit of space between, nice firm tonguing, right? If you're more, more of a beginner, uh, if you've been playing for free, a few years, uh, that G sharp might be. Uh, a little unfamiliar to you. That's just fingered two and three. All right. I hope you guys had some fun doing some Star Wars today. Again, looking for the really crisp tonguing. The notes and the rhythm I don't think will give you too much trouble. There is that leap, though, that's uh, a little bit tricky. All right. We'll see you all on Wednesday. Bye now.